truth and help us always to present truth with the love that you expect us to do so with, speaking the truth in love. Help us, Lord. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and be seated and um, turn to 1 John. We are um, in chapter 4, and it, you know, it's an amazing book. I, I actually was on the phone with somebody from Canada yesterday, another place. I'm going to Saskatoon, Canada, but uh, this was another area in Canada. And they said, oh yeah, it's pretty far away. Well, if you know Canada, it's like, Cal- you know, somebody says, well, I'm going to come to America. I had somebody tell me, I'm going to come to America and, and see you when we were in Knoxville. And he said, and then we're going to go out and uh, go, go to California. I said, you do realize this isn't like Germany or Italy or, you know, this is, this is big. I mean, you know, anyway, they didn't realize that. Same way with Canada, it is so big. But uh, I, I was reading through First John to him and telling him, you know, I was just quoting the Scripture and just telling him, look, this, is, this book right here, you need to study First John. Uh, it's all about love. And if you don't love enough, study First John. If you don't understand love, study First John. If you want to be more loving, study First John. And I know we can all stand to be a little bit more loving. And yes, that was a Baptist preacher that said those words from the pulpit. Uh, because I don't, I don't know that we understand love like we should. So let's go ahead and jump into verse 7. So we're in 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Well, there you go. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So when you look at this one section of just What, four verses? There is so much packed in. Beloved, let us. In other words, it's uh, uh, let us do it. You know, you you tell somebody, hey, let me me love you. Let let us love one another. Don't try to hinder people from loving others. Say, well, you got to hate who I hate. Well, you shouldn't hate anybody. You ought to have the same enemies I've got. You ought not expect that of people. There, I, I was watching Walton County uh, commissioners and they were trying to fire somebody from the planning commission and, it, and there was a picture the guy held up and he said, here's a picture of you with, you know, basically with people I don't like. You need to be fired. Really? That's demented. Well, if they're not my friends, they can't be your friends. You know... Let's not be like that in life. And you say, well, I would never be like that. You'd be surprised how many people are. Well, you can't like them if I don't like them. That's not true. You can, you, you, you've got to realize, you know, here, now we were, we were looking at uh, Scientology. So we watched a program on Scientology last night. And that program basically is, and listen, Scientology's got $3 billion. They're buying property all over. They, when they went after, the IRS went after them, they went after the IRS and sued the IRS agents, a uh, thousand plus lawsuits. And they were told, look, if you let this go, we will drop all, all the lawsuits will go away. And the, and the director of the IRS was like, Really? They dropped all the lawsuits, and now the Scientology is a 501c3 charitable um, institution. And I'm going to tell you what, you, you ought to look at what that is. And, and what they do is they interview you, and they, it's like confessing to a priest. They get all the goods on you. So they get all the goods, and then if you try to uh, stand up against them, think about those in Hollywood... They know what you think, why you think, how you act, what you've done. They've got everything on you. And that's Scientology and it's a religion. And basically, you can't associate with people they tell you not to associate with because they 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 will then eliminate you. 
They follow people. They, they get, they've spied on people for years and years and years. Bought a house across the street and put you know, cameras in there. And It's such a scary thing to think about. Uh, but that's religion. That's a cult. A cult says you can't, be, you can't love people I don't love. Christianity is you love everybody. I mean, you got to like everybody. I've told you that. You don't have to like everybody, but you got to love them. How do you love them? Well, you pray for them. Give them the gospel. You don't, you don't seek out a vindictive nature, a vengeful nature. You're not jealous about what they've achieved in life. You don't have hatred in your heart. That's what you're supposed to do. What religion and cults tell you is if they're not my friend, they can't be your friend and you must get them out of your life. We're talking family members they did this to. What a shame. What a shame. And, 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 and the mind control that they use. Just like I told you, I was almost... Um, I, you know, I went to house one of our church members and they invited some Mormons in and, and the guy was hypnotizing me. Or us, I don't know. And I had my finger on the Bible, and I, I, I just, it says, when you make one proselyte, you make him twofold more of the child of hell than yourselves. And he, and he paused, and I looked down, and I read that verse somehow, and God just protected me. Because the thought that was going through my mind was, these are nice people, these are good people, these are... And I, and I knew I was being hypnotized, because I told you in a bar when I was... 19 here in, in Fort Walton Beach, I tried to be hypnotized. And, some, and my arm was going up and, and somebody interrupted it and it fell back down. But I remember the euphoric feeling. That's the same feeling I had. And what is that? That's religion. You see, in this religion of Scientology, they can lie to you so long as it has a greater good. And the greater good is defined by the, by the cult. Listen, love... Love is not vindictive. Love is not vengeful. Love is not jealous. Love doesn't harbor hatred. Uh, but there are people that are better haters than they are lovers. Sounds odd. Doesn't mean you turn a blind eye to sin. You know, doesn't mean, well, you, you got to love all the wickedness in the world. You got to, you got to, you, you got to, we define love like this and it's really lust. That's not what it is. So as you look at this thing, it says, Behold, Beloved, let us love one another. Look at Galatians 4. Galatians 4. And it's going to be important that I define certain of these things because I think you could get yourself in trouble if you start you know, looking at this in the wrong context. Galatians 4, 8, How be it then, when we knew not God, that means they were lost, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, now that they have known God, after that we have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I, I am just shocked the way religion has got all these holy days. You know, every, every, you know, the only one they probably haven't pulled in completely is Halloween, but I guess that's coming. You know, Halloween secular. Well, so are all the other ones. So is Christmas. Oh, it's the birth of Jesus. Jesus wasn't born in December. You know, you just... If you look back at the history, it'll shock you how all this came about. But they, we've got all these holy days and special days. and Listen, Sunday's a day when you come to church because of the first day of the week. But it is not the Sabbath day. If it was, we'd all be dead. How many of you did some work today? I, you know, you, you just, you can't. Yeah, Bill been working all morning. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. I see this a lot in the world today in, in, in Galatians 5. Look at verse, I think it's 14. Galatians 5, 14. Oops, I'm in four. Yeah, you could go way back. You could go to 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. He considers that one word. 
But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. You know, there are people that bite and devour each other. They gossip, they, they hurt, they, they intentionally and unintentionally say things that harm others. They bite and devour one another, and then they get consumed of their own wickedness. 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So walk in the Spirit. Listen, don't bite and devour one another. If you bite and devour each other, we bite and devour each other, you know what we'll have? We'll, we'll have a bunch of people that are harmed and hurting. And, and um, yeah, like I say a lot, or I say, I, I don't do a whole lot of counseling. Do you know why? Because counseling should come from the pulpit. If you are here at every service, do you know you generally will not need much counseling? Because the counseling is right here, right now. You want to know what your problem is? You don't love enough. How do I know that? None of us do. So what you do is you hear hear a sermon on love and you say, hey, I'm going to love more. Then as you start loving more, you go, wow, my life is just more peaceful. I've got more joy. I've got more contentment. I've got more of those things that God has has promised me. And then it, it, it helps you. And then you don't need to go, hey, preacher, I am really struggling with. Well, you know, I just preached on that last Sunday night. I just preached on that last Wednesday night. And you see, that's why in in 40 years, other than the three years I didn't go to church, I hardly ever missed a service. Now, I know you can watch online. I I am not um, uh, critiquing that. What I'm telling you, though, is if you miss a service, it may be the service where you get the answer that you're seeking for. And you may not even be seeking for for an answer to a question, but the question's there and the answer's there and the need is there. So it isn't like, well, I'm looking for an answer and I tuned in and I got my answer. No, I never even have the question because I got the answer before I asked the question. That's the way life works, too. People say, well, how are you doing today? I'm I'm doing fabulous. I, you know... Things can come in my life and I can get hit pretty hard and, you know, this is going on and that's going on and, um, and, and I, can, I can live a contented life because it doesn't matter. You don't determine my joy. You don't determine my relationship. You don't determine anything like that. Now, you can impact it if I let you. I can impact yours if you let it. Somebody else can impact yours if you let it. And you have to determine, look, I'm going to stay right with God. I'm going to draw nigh unto Him. He's going to draw nigh unto me because He promised to do that. And I'm not going to allow others to control me. You know, most people are controlled by their circumstances, their situation, and their surroundings. Why? Well, because that's humanity. Sure is. And by the way, Israel... Everything going on, oh man, it's the end of the world. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen to the price of gas? What's going to happen when they bomb Iran and Iraq gets in and they do this and all this goes on and it's just going to be, oh my goodness, we're going to have to pay 50 cents more for a gallon of gas. Well, go to sleep tonight. Stop worrying. Say, but you don't understand. I do understand. I have, to, I have spent my nights worrying years and years and years ago until I learned it was not worth the effort. Sleep is much better. Sleep is much greater. When I wake up in the morning and I've slept the night before, I am feeling better. And I love the, when I wake up in the morning and, man, the birds are chirping and, 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 and the sun is shining and, and I live in this free state of Florida and life is glorious. Man, what in the world would I want to worry about? If you, spent, if you spent last night worrying about what's going on over there, you are sinning. Should you pray for Israel? Should you pray for Jerusalem? Sure. But I promise you, you're probably not going to impact it directly with your worry. Now let me say that another way. I promise you, wor- your worry will not impact it one iota. So just give it to God. Give it to God. Now bring it down here to where you are. Locally, give it to God. Yeah. Something happens, give it to God. Man, you wouldn't believe what? Give it to God. 
Now, I don't have to counsel anybody this week. Right? You all realize you need to give it to God, right? Now, it doesn't mean you can't say, hey, pastor, I, I got a need or I got a concern or I got... It doesn't mean you can't do that. And some of you need to do that, okay? Don't get me wrong. But if every one of you needed to do that, I would die, okay? So what do you do? Preventive maintenance. You know what we're doing right now? A little preventive maintenance, why? Because if we can prevent 90% of that which can be prevented, let's prevent it. What's that leave? 10%. You know, we can all live with about 10% of that stuff. So, beloved, let us love one another. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and you know, I've written books on Thessalonians, um, First and 2 Thessalonians about the rapture and all that. But in verse 5, what a tremendous verse. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. The Lord, here's the prayer. The Lord direct your hearts in the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. So you know what I say to you today if you're concerned about Israel? Let the Lord direct your hearts that way. Into the love of God and the patient waiting for Christ. That's my prayer for you. Now let's go over to the book of, uh, of John. Look at John chapter 5. Remember, John wrote John. John wrote 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. John wrote Revelation. In John chapter 5, look at um, verse 39. Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now what Scripture is he talking about? Old Testament. Search the, oh, search the Scriptures, the Old Testament that existed. For in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify me. The Old Testament testified to Jesus. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. You want to have life? Come to Jesus. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. What a rebuke. He said, I know you, you don't have the love of God in you. And then you look at John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. How do you know what love is? Love is giving. First time I ever told my wife I loved her was when we were down doing the unity candle. I, t I said, I love you. I, I didn't know what love was. I didn't, I didn't understand the Bible where it says John 3.16. And listen, I don't advise anybody else ever to do this. <laughs> Wait till then. But I told her I loved her because, listen, the Bible says husbands love your wives. Do you know it's a choice to love? If you can be commanded to love, it has to be a choice. You say, I don't love them anymore. That's because you choose not to love them. I don't love them. If you say, I don't love them anymore, it's because you have chosen and made a decision and decided, I'm stopped. I'm going to stop loving you. It's all a choice. God can't command you to do something that you don't have a choice to do. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. Why do we have to be told that? Because we have a tendency to you know, fall out of love of each other. That goes not only in the marriage relationship, but it goes in every relationship. We have a tendency to quit loving others like we should love others. Look at, um, look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, talking about this, this, this thing on love. And he says in Romans chapter 5, and you could start really early in verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Are Christians going to suffer tribulation? Yeah. You know, that's why I don't call it the tribulation period all the time. I call it Daniel's 70th week. Patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. How? By the Holy Ghost. Listen, if you don't have love, you probably don't have the Holy Ghost. If you're always looking to criticize and hate and, and hurt, you don't have the love of God shed abroad in your hearts, and the Holy Ghost's job is to do that for you. What's missing? 
Well, love's missing. Why is love missing? Maybe because you don't have the Holy Ghost, which means you're not saved. If you have not the Spirit of Christ, you're not His, the Bible says. People can quote Scripture all day long, but it doesn't mean they know Jesus. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3, look at verse 17. Ephesians 3.17, this is a prayer uh, of Paul. and, and uh, mm. Well, he says in verse 16, that He would grant you, that's part of his prayer, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. So you're rooted and grounded in love. So what do you do? You're rooted, grounded in love. You know what the problem with a lot of people is they've never been rooted and grounded in love. They grew up fighting and that's all they know. If you grew up fighting, you know what you have to be? You have to be a supernatural Christian. A supernatural Christian says, it doesn't matter how I grew up. It doesn't matter what my past is. It doesn't matter what my family life was like. I'm going to stop the, the circle and I'm going to quit fighting just to fight. There are people that want to fight. They love to make up. Really. There are people that love to fight because when they make up, that's the, that, 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 that is what uh, drives them. Oh, it's so much greater when we make up, so let's go ahead and fight. You know what I say? Don't encourage the fighting by making the makeup greater than the relationship prior to the fight. Now, that's just a little marital counseling for you. Verse 18. He said, well, verse 70, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. That you can know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. You know what I know? I know the love of Christ. But I didn't get it up here, I got it down here. I, when you get to know the love of Christ, you can love others unconditionally. And again, it does not mean that anybody can do anything they want to because the Bible says, if it be possible, live peaceably with all men, indicating it's not always possible. And the angry countenance turneth away a backbiting tongue. Sometimes you got to get angry. Sometimes you need to, you know... Pound people in the ground. No, I'm just kidding. Don't hit anybody. Don't hurt anybody. Love everybody. But you love them and you tell them the truth. And there's this thing now, well, you, you know, love is, love is defined as anything goes. Well, if I, if I want to be a woman now, and, and I decide, well, I'm a woman. I'm going to go in the women's room. And, 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 and you know, that's, you have to accept that. See, if I want, if, now look, I'm using myself because I don't want to use you. If I want to be a woman, maybe that's my business. I mean, dumb as a box of rocks, but it's my business if I want to be a woman. I will tell you this, I don't want to be a woman. There are men that are trying to have monthly cycles. Now, my wife had endometriosis and that's painful. I had workers that worked for me and they missed the same time every month because they could not come to work. They were in so much pain. And men want that? Are you nuts? Well, I want to carry a baby. I don't want to carry a baby. <laughs> Man, I run down here and I carry my phone and a drink and it's too much for me. And I'm going to carry a bowling ball? Are you nuts? And yet, you know, people say, well, not only do I want to do that, but you have to accept that because if you love me. No, if I love you, I'll tell you the truth. If I love you, the truth will make you free. I, I, if I love you, I'll show you how to be free. How can you be free? I tell you the truth. You say, well, wait a minute, uh, I, 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 I'm a man and I want to love a man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You do whatever you want to do. But I'm not going to sit back and go, well, you know what? I, I have to condone it and say, well, it's okay. It's all right. It's acceptable. I don't have to say that just because you say, well, you don't love me if you don't agree with me. Are you kidding me? That's why we have a society that is spoiled. 
Because they think that you have to agree with everything they do. You know what love is? Love is saying, hey, I'm going to tell you the truth even if it hurts me. Look at, um, look at John 17, and we'll bring it in for a landing. John 17, and um, here's what Jesus' prayer was. This is actually the Lord's prayer. Oops, I'm in 7, and I need to be in 17. John 17, the whole chapter is the Lord's prayer. It's not the one, our Father who art in heaven, you know, He said pray like this. That's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in John 17, and I don't, and I think I just, um, let me see where I need to go. I think I can only do about a verse. So look at verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Jesus didn't pray for the world. He prayed for those that were His. Are you His? If you are vindictive, if you're vengeful, if you're jealous, if you have hatred harbored in your heart, um, you may not be one of His. Or you may just be so carnal that you don't have a clue what love is. Love is giving of yourself. How do I know I love my wife? How does she know I love her when I give of myself? I was out running. I came back today and I was running out of time. I was like, man, I got to, you know, because I had the dog thing. And I was like, man, I got to do this. I got to do that. And I came in. She's like, I got your bath water run. I got you a cup. I got you a cup of coffee hot. I got you breakfast right here. And I'm thinking, man, I was going to skip breakfast. I need a cup of coffee because I got to clear my, you know, even though I was coughing and when I was running and all that, but I was thinking, man, I got to, you know, what in the world? And then my love, my, my love displayed her love toward me. Let's all stand together. Lord, we do thank you for your many blessings, guide, lead, and direct in all things. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to love one another like we should. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got about 13 minutes.